Well, I want us to um, continue with what we began last Sunday. We are talking about faithfulness. We are talking about a very important ingredient uh, that this world that we live in needs. God is looking for faithful people. Uh, families are looking for faithful people. Businesses are looking for faithful people. And um, uh, the Bible says that the faithful are scarce. How I pray that you will be in that small group of faithful people. That the Lord will help you to um, uh, be in the small group that um, uh, will be counted faithful. Even as God is looking for the faithful. And as people around us are also looking for faithful people. And I want you to know that being born again does not necessarily make you a faithful person. There are so many tongue-speaking believers who are not faithful. People who can pray like a house on fire, but they are not faithful. There are people who can sing like an angel has just dropped from heaven, but they are not faithful. So faithfulness has nothing to do with your spirituality. It has everything to do with you committing to the principles of the word of God that will make you faithful. And you need to be determined to be a faithful person. So just the fact that you are in church doesn't make you faithful, unfortunately. Let's turn to the book of um, Luke chapter 16. We're going to read some three verses there in Luke 16. But even as we um, turn to Luke 16, I am doing part three of faithfulness. Part one we did last Sunday. And um, I was able to um, give us uh, definitions of what faithfulness is. Um, I was able to share with us uh, the areas where we will be. Uh, I gave us a test or a glimpse of uh, those areas where our faithfulness is tested. And um, I also touched a little bit on uh, the um, examples of faithful people. And on Wednesday, I did part two where I shared about the benefits that we uh, get or we derive from being faithful and one of them or number one on the list was you become a friend of God when you are faithful and um, this morning I am doing part number three of faithfulness and I am going to do what I call a case study a case study of biblical characters that will help us in these three areas that we are tested on faithfulness which is faithfulness with the little or the least or the small things, faithfulness with money, and then faithfulness with what belongs to another person. Luke chapter number 16, we are reading from verse number 10 to 12. The Bible says, He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to you or who commit to your trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? Now, those three scriptures are kind of crystallize what, you know, the areas where... Uh, God will beam his light on you to uh, find out whether you are faithful or not. In these three areas, also men will also look at you and, um, uh, uh, and they will be able to know whether you are faithful or not. 
if you pass the test in these three areas, I can assure you that God will count you faithful and the men or the people around you will also be able to testify of your faithfulness. So you want to be very careful in these three areas, um, handling the list or handling the small things and you want to be careful on how you handle money and how you handle another person's property or things. Praise the name of the Lord. So um, you will be tested in these three areas. You, you are not going to be tested on how faithful you are by the amount of tongues you speak or by, you know, the time you spend in prayer. You will be tested in you are in the area of faithfulness in these three areas are you faithful with little things or the least or the small things are you faithful in that number two you will be tested with money how do you handle money are you faithful with money and the Bible says that God will not or you will not be entrusted with true riches if you cannot handle the unrighteous mammon. Praise the name of the Lord. In other words, money is not in self true riches. True riches has nothing to do with money because there are things that money cannot buy. But true riches can give them to you. Praise the name of the Lord. Then you will be tested in how you handle other people's things. How you handle other people's property. And if you're found, in, I mean, found faithful in these three areas, then I believe when you go before the Lord, you'll be able to tell you, welcome you good and faithful servant. So we are going to do cut, um, three biblical characters who will help us to... Uh, understand or be able to um, uh, analyze these three uh, areas or these three testing areas of faithfulness. And we're going to look at the life of David. We'll look at the life of Abraham. And then we will look at the life of Joseph. Beginning with David. David demonstrates to us faithfulness in little things or faithfulness in small beginnings. Faithfulness in little things of faithfulness in small beginnings and i'm here to tell you everyone begins small nobody begins big and if you are not faithful in smallness you will not be faithful in bigness when we are born we are not born you know as 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 big people we begin small and we ought to be faithful in the list when god was creating the heavens and the earth and when he put man in the garden of eden and he knew that a time was coming that this earth was supposed to be filled with the billions of people that we have today he did not decide to begin big and have you know the seven billion people popping up just like that he had the power to do so he would have just decided you know what in that is let there be chinese boom let there be asians on the other side boom let there be africans on that place boom and he would have filled the earth the way he wanted but god begins small because he knows that um, that is the way for things to grow and so in your life you are going to begin small small and you need to be faithful in the small the businesses that you see today that are as big as they are even the multinational businesses they began small praise the name of the lord kfc the people who love kfc it was begun just by the recipe of a man recipe of a man who you know uh, made some chicken and he liked the chicken he made in his own house and decided you know what i can turn this into a business he sent this recipe to um, several restaurants they turned him down several times until he decided you know what i can start my own and in a small way today kfc is in several nations of the world so People begin small, but you have to be faithful in the small beginnings, in the little things. Now, if you're going to um, make it or to manage to be faithful in the list, 
in the small things, in the small beginnings, there are three things you need to take note of. Number one, you need to recognize and appreciate small beginnings. You need to recognize and appreciate little things that you are blessed with. Recognize and appreciate. Don't be the type that when you are handling small things, you don't appreciate them. Handling people that are small, you know, in positions, you don't. You handle them just like anybody. You need to be the type of a person that appreciates even the small people in your life. Praise the name of the Lord. You appreciate the children. You appreciate your get man. You appreciate your housemaid. You appreciate that shamba guy. You appreciate the messenger in the office you don't look at them like less creatures they are not less people hallelujah they are people created in the image of god and when you appreciate their smallness then you can be able to be entrusted with bigger things you need to recognize and appreciate small beginnings don't be the type that when you are doing something small you have no commitment you have no passion you have no zeal you have no character you are waiting to become you know uh, committed and passionate and uh, 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 um, you know of character when something begins big no you must appreciate small beginnings praise the name of the lord so when you look at the life of david you will realize that david who became the king and one of the most celebrated kings of israel began small and appreciated and recognized his small beginnings praise the name of the lord um david was anointed as the next king of israel in first samuel chapter 16 first samuel chapter number 16 is the time that samuel is sent by god to the house of jesse to look for the next king god told them um, samuel i have rejected saul and i've gotten a man after my own heart and i want you to go to the family of jesse and anoint for me a king there and so samuel takes johnny gets into the compound of jesse and he wants the sons to be paraded jesse has eight sons seven of them are grown one of them is still young and so when samuel shows up he parades the seven sons that qualify to be in the army qualify to be able to be you know uh, in kingship position and samuel prays and maybe speaks in tongues to anoint the next king and every time he took he took the the horn that was full of oil because the anointing them days was the horn was full of oil was to be poured on the head of that person and every time he did that the oil will not pour and uh, god would tell him not that one i've rejected that one and he did that for all the seven and he wondered you know uh god you sent me here to anoint the king the sons have been paraded and the oil is not flowing so he asked is there another son and he was told yeah there's a young man uh and so uh, samuel says no 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 until he comes we are not sitting down david shows up and as david shows up god speaks to samuel and says he is the one anoint him he's anointed as king as the next king and of course he has to wait until saul gets out of the throne to become king but the moment that he was anointed in the spiritual realms everything was set for him as the next king of israel but the surprising thing is that you come to chapter number 17 and david is still taking care of the sheep of his father a man that has just been anointed as the next king of israel some of us when we are at our places of work and our management position has become vacant and rumors are you are the next one to be put in that place my friend even your friends will notice that you are waiting to ascend to the position because you change the way you talk you change the way you walk you change the way that you deal with people it's just a rumor hey you have not even been confirmed with the place now you are talking as though you are already assumed the place why 
because you know you 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 lack high positions you cannot even rest in the place you even live you are not doing your work properly why because i'm living this is not where i am you know but david was faithful even in the little that he was called to do so in first samuel chapter 17 verse number 17 to 20 uh, uh david has shown up you know in the in the um uh, the place where the Israelites were fighting the Philistines, and as he shows up, his brother is very mad with him. First Samuel seventeen seventeen to twenty. Uh, his brother is very annoyed, and he's wondering, you know, what he has come to do in the battlefield. He doesn't belong there. He doesn't qualify to be there. What is he doing in the place? And the question is asking him, who have you left those few sheep with? Who have you left the few sheep with that you are here? And um, David, of course, had already made arrangement. David was not the type of person who will just walk out, you know, and, and leave um, whatever his responsibilities were. Even though they were small, he made sure that there was, there was arrangement for uh, the, the ship, the little ship to be taken care of before he left to go to take the errand or to do the errand that his father had called him to do. Praise the name of the Lord. And um, in verse number 28 of First Samuel 17, you read these words. Now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men, and Eliab's anger was aroused against David and he said why did you come down here and with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness I know your pride and the insolence of your heart for you have come down to see the battle now David did not go there to see battle he did not go there because of pride he only went there because he was sent and if you read the earlier verses, the Bible says that his father sent him. He woke up very early in the morning, make sure that his work was left properly taken care of before he took, um, you know, the errand that his father was sending him to. I want to challenge you today. Never misbehave when you are handling small things, when you are handling people that you consider small and you deal with them like they are nobodies you deal with these things like they are nothing no those are the steps those are the you know the stairs that will take you to greatness praise the name of the lord the little things are the ones that are Rocked the bigger things. If you don't handle them well, they will never attract the greatness that you are looking for. Number two thing or way or that will help you to be faithful in little things. Do whatever you are assigned to do with diligence and joy. Whatever you are given to do, that small, that um, insignificant work that you are doing in that place, in that organization, in that company, do it with diligence and joy. Don't be the type that is so annoyed with everybody just because you know you consider what you are doing to be too small and irrelevant. If your work is to drive for the company, drive with diligence and drive with joy. If yours is to clean the offices, clean the offices with diligence and with joy. It is in doing those small things with diligence and joy that will elevate you to high places. And I'm talking to you as a believer this morning. I'm not addressing everybody. I'm addressing you, born again believers. People are promoted. People are rewarded, not because of their prayers in the, in, the, in the office, not because of them going with anointing oil to anoint the seat of the boss and say, one day I possess this position in the name of Jesus. You will never get there 
by possessing you will get there by being faithful by being diligent doing your work with joy with diligence that is the way that you get promotion praise the name of the lord we are pentecostal that have this gospel of possessing everything you go and anoint your boss's chair that you are going to get there and when they look at your record you are not faithful you are not committed you don't work hard you are late in work you are the first one to leave and here you are kura bashandala man anointing the seat and saying you are possessing it i am here to tell you that prayer will never be answered that possession will never happen be faithful be diligent in what you are doing and maybe god in his own goodness and mercy will elevate you praise the name of the lord hallelujah be faithful be diligent in what you're doing you see uh, um when joseph i mean when uh, david was leaving he would have said hey my dad has been confining me to take care of sheep he doesn't even recognize i'm the next king now that i'm leaving let me leave this place let them realize that i was actually important Wacha hizo mbuzi zipotee kidogo ndio wajue kwamba David alikuwa anafanya kazi ya ma ya maana. You know some people when they are in places and God is elevating them they want to make sure they have corrogated everything they have spoiled everything before they leave so that we can say hey by the way we miss so and so. We are not going to miss you by corroborating things. Hallelujah. We will miss you by being faithful. Hallelujah. So David he's keen with what he's doing. And David whatever work he was given to do, if it is to send uh, to send bread, he did it diligently and with joy. When he was anointed king in 1 Samuel chapter 16, reading from verse 14 to 23, just note them down, you can read later. King Saul has been rejected by God and an evil spirit begins to torment King Saul. One of his advisors say, you know what? This kind of spirits are always gotten rid of when music is played. There is somebody, there is a young man, a son of Jesse, that knows how to play the harp. If you bring him, he will play for you and the spirit will go. And so uh, Saul says, bring David to me. He sends word to Jesse. Jesse releases um, uh, Jesse releases David to go and serve King Saul. Remember, he's already been anointed as the next king. And he's being told to go and serve the next, I mean, the, the king that has been rejected by God. Hey, he goes there and his work is to play the harp and to serve the king. And he does it with joy. Whenever he did it, the spirit, that evil spirit disappeared. Saul was at peace. Come on, Nikulala Lilala. Praise the name of the Lord. Because David did his work with diligence and with joy. You can imagine you've just been promised to be the next MD. And the other one has not left. And you're being told, you know what, serve him. Um, <laughs> make sure that his car is in order. You say, who? Me. <laughs> I am the next one. Let them get somebody else to do it. But David diligently did that if you are going to be found faithful if you are going to pass the test of faithfulness in small beginnings my friend do whatever work that you are given with joy and with diligence however small come and you could sweep sweep properly until people know somebody was here sweeping if it is cleaning clean until people know somebody was here cleaning Praise the name of the Lord. Thirdly, if you're going to be found uh, faithful in little things, be willing to risk your life for the little things, even in that little position. Be willing to put your neck on the line for the company. Yes, you are just an office messenger, but if somebody is messing up and try to bring the business down, you can stand up and say, we don't do those kind of things in this company. They might ask you, who do you think you are? Tell them, I'm a faithful servant of this place. Hallelujah. Be faithful. Even in church, you are not in the leadership of the church, but be faithful. Hallelujah. 
Be faithful. Don't just be there when people are tearing down your church family you are joining. No. Say, and if they ask you, who are you speaking? You know, what position do you have? I'm a faithful servant, a faithful member of that church. Praise the name of the Lord. Be willing to risk your life. Let people call you names. You know, Africans, we have a problem. I don't know whether it is as a result of being colonized too much. And we have this resist kind of mentality. To a point where, when you are working as a civil servant and you are faithful, people wonder, what is wrong with you? Why must you be faithful? This is government work. Why are you why are you saying we should not use the phone, the, the, the office phone for our own business? You know, it's like something is wrong with you when you are faithful, serving faithfully. I don't know where this mentality came from. And people will tell you Utakufa maskini because of your faithfulness. Risk your life. Risk being called a fool. Risk being told you are going to die poor. But you know what? You are not going to die poor. You may not have the money which is unrighteous mammon, but the true riches shall be yours because of your faithfulness. Number four. How to become faithful in the little things. While moving to greater things or greater positions, Keep your eyes on the smaller things. Don't be the type just because you have been moved. Now you cannot talk to people that are in that place that you came from. You still need to remember where you came from, where God has gotten you from. Praise the name of the Lord. Value. When David was being sent to King Saul, the Bible says he will go back and forth. 1 Samuel 17, 15. David will be going back and forth. He will go serve, serve uh, the king whenever he needed him to go and play the harp. Then he will go back and take care of the sheep. This is the anointed next king. But you know what? He has never said, now that I'm anointed, I can never do sheep keeping anymore. It was a requirement of the family that as the last born he did that and he did it with diligence until the day that David ascended to positions praise the name of the Lord hallelujah so God is going to test you with little how you handle your little position your low position God will be able to entrust you with bigger things How you handle yourself when you are in lowly position will determine how God deals with you, whether he promotes you or not. And the Bible says, he is the one who raises one and the one that brings down another. Praise the name of the Lord. Number two, number two area of testing faithfulness with money faithfulness with money abraham um, shows us how we can be faithful in the area of money in the area of money and again if you're going to pass this test there are a few things you need to put into consideration number one if you're ever going to pass the test of money you must put into consideration that you yourself, you are a steward and the money is God's resources given to you. You are a steward of God's resources given to you. If you take yourself as the owner, as the ultimate owner, you will fail the, fa- the test of faithfulness in the area of money. 
One way of you passing this test is to make sure that you look at yourself. You consider yourself a steward and whatever God has given to you as his riches that you are supposed to be taking care of. Praise the name of the Lord. In Genesis chapter 14, verse number 14 to 20. Genesis 14. The Bible says this. Genesis 14, 14 to 20. Now when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his 318 trained servants who were born in his own house and went in pursuit as far as Dan. He divided his forces against them by night, and he and his servants attacked them and pursued them as far as Hobah, which is north of Damascus. So he brought back all the goods and also brought back his brother Lot and his goods, as well as the women and the people. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Sheva, that is the king's valley. After his return from the defeat of um, um, Kedolaoma and the kings who were with him, then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. This is a significant of, um, or a symbolism of the Holy Communion. Uh, Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God most high. And he blessed him. He blessed Abraham and said, Blessed be Abraham of God most high possessor of heaven and earth and blessed be God most high who has delivered your enemies into your hand and he gave him a tithe of all he gave him a tithe of all now the king of Sodom said to Abraham give me the persons and take the goods for yourself but Abraham said to the king of Sodom I have raised my hands to the Lord God most high the possessor of heaven and earth that I will take nothing from a thread to a sandal strap, and that I will not take anything that is yours, lest you should say, I have made Abraham rich, except only what the young men have eaten, and the portion of the men who went with me, uh, Anar, Ashkor, and Mamre, let them take their portion. Now, um, Abraham is told that his nephew Lot has been taken captive his wives and his possessions have been you know taken by uh, um, um, the king of Dan and so Abraham had 318 young men that were um, you know living in his house as servants and he decided we are going to fight and pursue. We are going to pursue and fight these um, uh, kings that have taken my brother Lot and his family and their possessions. We will fight so that we can take those possessions back. And by the grace of God, he succeeds in um, uh, defeating the, the kings, gets back Lot, gets back the families, get back the, uh, whatever they had looted from them. And he's marching back. Then he meets this Melchizedek. Melchizedek, you know, uh, is a priest of God. And um, uh, Melchizedek brings out, you know, um, wine and bread uh, so that they can be able to celebrate communion, to seal that victory. And Abraham, uh, I mean, Abraham here realizes this is the priest of God. God has just blessed me. God has just given me victory. God has just, you know, preserved me. And so Abraham, the Bible says, is um, uh, led to give a tithe. At this particular time, tithe has not been even given as law. It has not been directed for the children of Israel to do it. So who made Abraham tithe? It is God himself who placed that idea in his mind and in his heart and gave him the ability reminding him you are a steward of everything that you have. And so Abraham knowing that whatever he has, the victory he has received, whatever he has gotten as loot, 
all belongs to God. He's just a steward. He decides to give a tenth of it. You will never have a problem with tithing so long as you understand the principle of you being a steward and God owning you and everything else that you own. So long as you consider yourself the master and the boss and you own everything, you will have a problem with tithing. You will have a problem with honoring God. But when you know that uh, I'm just a steward of the things that God has brought my way, you will overcome the problem of money. You will be able to overcome the stealing from God that is a problem to many people. You will not struggle with faithfulness in the area of money because you know you are a steward. Praise the name of the Lord. I know you will say, oh, you know, um, I have earned this. This is my sweat. I have worked for it. I have sweated for it. Yes, even Abraham sweated to win that battle and to get that loot. But still, he knew that this is God. I am a steward and he gave. You know what? I want to ask you this. Those of us who think this is mine, I have sweated for it. I have worked so hard for it. I want you to know, you know what? Yes, you have worked hard. Yes, you have the brains and the ideas to make money, to make wealth. Yes, you have the connections. Whatever your hands touch. You know, some of us, we have these golden hands. Whatever you touch just prospers. But you know what? You can wake up one morning and your limbs refuse to move. You can wake up one morning and your tongue stacks on the top of the roof of your mouth. You can wake up one morning and your memory is completely wiped out. You know you are like, um, <laughs> you don't know anything. You don't remember whether you are going or coming. You don't remember whether you know you own anything. You can wake up and things have gone haywire. So in other words, that working hard you talk about, that brains you think that you are the one that is making you make the money, there are a lot of things that are beyond your control that are contributing to the fact that, um, you know, to that working hard, hallelujah, you have no control about your day, about your waking up. You have no control about, about your body. God can decide, you know what, you know it all, okay, fine. You give yourself the oxygen, give yourself the power to move, and you know what, you will realize with all the brains you have, with all the ideas you have, there are things that are totally beyond your control. And therefore, you need to know you are a steward of the things that God has given to you. Never have a problem with the area of tithing in your life at all because you are a steward. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, some people ask questions, oh, you know, uh, we don't even know how uh, that tithe is used. We don't even know what it does. Now, let me ask you a question. Abraham is meeting Melchizedek. He doesn't know where he's coming from. He doesn't know where he's going. He doesn't know after, whatever, after they are meeting what is going to happen to the tithe that he has given. Hallelujah. That is the principle. Abraham would have said, hey, by the way, I need to know who this Melchizedek is first. I need to know where he's coming from, where he's going, what he's going to do before I can tithe. He never did that. He just honored the voice that spoke to him, that reminded him that he was a steward. And he gave. And therefore, Abraham passed the test of money. That is why after this, hallelujah, after this, God blesses Abraham in a big way. Because he passed this test. Praise the name of the Lord. Number two, if you're going to pass this test of money, determine to honor God. And I think I've already touched on it already. Determine to honor God with your tithe and your offering. Have no issue. Supporting the work of God. Giving. Because, after all, all you have belongs to the one that has given it to you. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says, give Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give God what belongs to God. And you know, we are faithful to Caesar because Caesar takes it before we see it. Right? 
For those of us who are employed, your taxes zinaendaga juu kwa juu. Praise the name of the Lord. You are not given an opportunity to decide, am I going to pay tax or not? It is chopped. It is taken. Now, some of us are faithful tax givers because Caesar takes it by force. Caesar has a way of punishing us when we don't give to him what belongs to him. The taxman will come and you know what happens. So we are faithful to that. But I want you to know this. The same way that Caesar has power to take it, whether you like it or not, God also has power even stronger than Caesar. God has more power than the Kenya government. Praise the name of the Lord. You fear government. That is why you pay tax, but you need to fear God more. Because what God can do for you, government cannot do. What God sees, government may not be able to see. It's only that God has chosen to handle us in this manner of trust. It's not that he doesn't have the power to chop it up. He can. And there are incidences that he has done so. Where people have decided, you know, I'm... I'm um, I'm working hard, this belongs to me, I'm not tithing. And, and God says, okay, fine. So he decides to take it in other ways. You keep it, but it goes. Those are the months where somebody has died there, the other one is sick, the other one needs you fundraising to do what? Your WhatsApp is busy, busy. Be faithful. In the area of money. The Bible says if you cannot be trusted with what the money that the unrighteous mammon, who will trust you with true riches? Praise the name of the Lord. Who would trust you with true riches? So Abraham passes the test of money by being faithful to God. And faithful to man. Because the third thing he does, or that you need to do to order to pass this test, in order to pass this test is, don't fall into the trap of get-rich-quick schemes. The schemes of get-rich-quick, be careful. Oh, put bet here and you will make money. Oh, do this and you will do this. Be careful with those schemes and those traps. Because some of these schemes and traps, they are actually evil work of the enemy to make sure that he has possessed and gotten hold of you, chained you up. He will tell you, I'm the one who made you rich. So in Genesis 14, 21 to 24, Abraham is given an open check by the king of Sodom. The king of Sodom who owned the 318 young men that went to fight with Abraham. Hallelujah. Abraham is offered and is told, you know what? You have taken the loot. All the loot that you have taken, have it as you are, uh, no, as you are. Stay with them. Just give back the young men because they belong to the nation. Let them be here. But you take the riches. But Abraham says, no, I cannot do that because if I do that, you are going to say you are the one that made me rich. I am not out for get rich quick schemes. I don't need it. And so he refuses. He says, you are the king of the nation. Whatever is taken in war belongs to the nation. It belongs to you. You have it. All you need to do is pay up the young men their dues. That's all. As far as for me, leave me alone. How many of us would have, even if we were not offered, would have fought for it? I'm the one who fought. This king now just comes and says, give me everything. Hey, we would not have even waited to be given. We would have demanded for it. Now, this test of money, most of us are failing in this test. We cannot be trusted with money and we are believers. It is sad to note that people are saying they cannot do business with a believer, with a fellow Christian. Why? Because they will not, they will not be faithful. People are finding it hard to loan money to Christians, believers, tongue-speaking Christians. Why? Because they will not pay. 
It's sad. I have pastors who owe me money and they have never paid in years. And we meet and they talk and, and they don't even think whatever they have done is wrong. I was being told a story of um, uh, a Somali guy who gives uh, money so long as somebody he knows, their friend, they have done business, you know, they, he can trust the people with money. They don't write anywhere, no agreement, nothing. He just says, you do business, whenever you get the money, give it back to me. Now, if these people who we say do not know the real God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. You are the one who knows the God, the one who made the heavens and the earth, the God who blesses people. And you can never be trusted with money, my friends. Something is wrong. Something is wrong with us, believers. That people cannot do business with us. You want to lend a Christian money, you have to write an agreement, take the copy of ID, stamp it with your foot and fingers, and make sure you follow them up every day, and they will still, they get to a point, they don't even pick your phone calls anymore. And the person will still go to church and lift up their hands and say, Oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey. Na ukona pesa ya watu na ukipigiwa simu haushiki na ukitumiwa text haujibu na ukiona mtu anakuja ile njia unachukua kona na and you are a believer come on we need deliverance in this area so if you cannot be trusted with unrighteous mammon God is asking, who will trust you with true riches? You know, as, as people in the world, they know. There are people you don't steal from, my friend. There are people you don't steal from because they can get you from the hole you enter. They will find you there. They will smoke you out. There are people you don't steal from. But believers are the only breed who can steal from the, the most powerful person on the earth. And they think they can never be found. We are stealing from God. The test of money, you must pass this test in Jesus' name. Amen? Be faithful. If you are entrusted with somebody's money, please keep it safe. Pay it back. I don't leave you with a hundred thousand I tell you keep for me I'll take next month then you take twenty and then you start smiling at me and, and, and greet me buona sifiwe. No, no, no. My money must be given back. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The buona asifiwe must be after you have paid and refunded. <laughs> I was being told of um, a bishop who refused to answer a fellow bishop who said one has a few and he says has a few <laughs> because the man <laughs> the man could not be trusted he's been running he just been picking his calls he not been answering and sending back his text now they meet and he says one has a few has a few you pay me back my money Praise the Lord. Thirdly, the third area where we are tested in is being faithful with what is another person's. And Joseph, Joseph is the character that shows us about being faithful with what belongs to another person. And if you are going to pass this test of being faithful with another person's property or things, the first thing you need to do is learn to handle other people's things the way you would like yours to be handled. Learn to handle other people's things the way you would like yours to be handled. If you don't like your car to be driven on pavement, don't drive other people's cars on pavement. Praise the name of the Lord. 
even your company car, even the government car, don't drive it on pavement if you would never want yours to be driven on pavement. Praise the name of the Lord. If you don't want your house to be mishandled, glasses zimetolewa kwa window, the, the window glasses are off, you know, and you don't even care because it's not your own house. If you don't want yours to ever be handled that way, make sure that the other persons is not also, you know, you don't handle it roughly. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Handle other people's things the way you would like yours to be handled. In Genesis chapter 39, reading verse number 4 to 10. The Bible says, So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house, and all that he had he put under his authority. So it was from the time that he had made him overseer of his house, and all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake, and the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Thus he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he did not know what he had, what he had except for the bread which he ate. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance and it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast longing eyes on joseph and she said uh, she said lie with me but he refused and said to his master's wife look my master does not know what is with me in the house and he has committed all that he has to my hand there is no one greater in this house than i nor has he kept back anything from me but you because you are his wife how then can i do this great wickedness and sin against God. Handle other people's things the way you'd want your things to be handled. When Joseph was left in charge, he took care of that house as though it was his house. He took care of the things in that house as if they were his own things. Until the master came to a point and said, you know what? This young man is doing a better, do a better job than even me. He left everything in his charge. Praise the name of the Lord. May you work so hard and so faithfully that even your boss can entrust you with anything including his password oh no <laughs> hallelujah Joseph was so faithful he handled the things of this man as his own Amen. Those of us who have house helps, those house helps are other people's children. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't mishandle them. Handle them the way you would want your own daughter if they were in the same place to be handled. Amen. You don't treat a lady who has been entrusted, and some of them are relatives. Somebody says, oh, my, my daughter has just finished school. She's still, you know, we have no money to take her to college. So this year she will be, uh, she will just be here uh, and, and uh, they are sending them to you. You are the auntie or you are, I don't know whether. And your own sibling's child, you treat them as a slave. You want them to wake up at four. You want them to sleep at midnight. Hey! Would you want your daughter to be treated that way? So handle other people's things the way you would want your own to be handled. Not just because it's not your child, so you just treat them the way you want. Praise the name of the Lord. They are women who are so cruel to house helps. Cruel. And they are believers. And then you tell this, this house help that you have been harassing the whole day. Kuja kwa devotion. Hey. Wana kuja because they fear you. Lakini inside they are saying devotion gani. 
And then unaambia vile Mungu anapenda watu. <laughs> and the way we are supposed to love people. Inside they are saying, eh, eh. And you? Who do you love? So if you know that you will never want your daughter to be handled in that manner if they were in the same position, never handle other people's kids badly. Praise the name of the Lord. By the way, somebody said, if you make sure that your house help is the one that wakes up early and the one that does things and your children only wake up to take breakfast and they go to school and come back, they can't even remove place from the table. What you're doing, you are training the house help and not training your own children. Hallelujah. Number two thing that you need to do if you're going to pass this test of handling other people's things, be dependable. Be dependable in what you are entrusted with. Be dependable in what you are entrusted with. In verse number five and six of Genesis 39, the Bible says, so it was from the time that he had made him overseer over, uh, of his house and all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake, and the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Verse 6, thus he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. This man, Joseph, was so deep the man could depend on him. He will sleep easy knowing Joseph is in charge. Joseph is faithful. Joseph will make sure that nothing goes wrong. If you are left in church, can people depend on you? Can people depend on you? Whatever you have been entrusted with, can your boss depend on you? Or you are the type that he has to keep calling. Hey, by the way, have you remembered to do that thing? Did you remember to? Did you? Now you are not dependable. A dependable person is the one you have given assignment and you know it shall be done. Faithful people are people when they are given assignment whoever give the assignment will sleep easy because they can depend on them amen now if you are left in charge of things and you choose to pray instead of working you choose to anoint the seat of the boss to take over hey You will be sucked, my friend. <laughs> With all the prayers you are making, you will still be sucked. And God will not even lift a finger. Amen. Be dependable. Be a person that can be trusted. It is sad, people of God, that some people are saying, don't, don't, don't... Uh, don't, don't, don't employ, don't put a Christian or a believer that those tongue speaking people, don't give them this kind of position. They won't work. It is sad. We must be so faithful that people can depend on us. Amen. Number three. If you're going to be faithful with what belongs to another person, you need to know your limits. Know your limits. And don't abuse opportunities given to you. Know your limits and don't abuse the opportunities given to you. Joseph knew his limits. Genesis 39 and verse number 9. He says, There is no one greater in this house than I, nor has he kept back anything from me but you, because you are his wife. Know your limits. Joseph knew. Everything has been left in my hand. He says no one is greater in the house than he was. But he knew my limits ends up when it comes to the wife of this man. And you know the Bible says this wife, because Joseph was handsome, 
she pressurized Joseph so much so much the Bible says in verse um, number 10 so it was as she spoke to Joseph day by day that he did not heed her to lie with her or to be with her verse number um, 6 Part B is where he says, Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. That is what attracted the lady to him. You can imagine every morning, the lady is like, I've never seen a handsome, young, faithful man like you. Compliments. Joseph did not allow those compliments to get into his head. They did not put stars in his eyes. But some of us, when somebody just tells you, I like your shoes, <laughs> you're already thinking other things. I like your hairstyle. Your knees begin to wobble. Compliments. Just a simple compliment has made people who are unfaithful to fall. And then you bring excuses. Oh, my husband doesn't tell me I'm beautiful. Doesn't tell me I'm nice. So this person told me, hey. Mere compliment. Hallelujah. But Joseph knew his limit. He said, everything I have access, everything has been given, but you are my limit. Praise the name of the Lord. You are my limit. And the reason why it was that that this lady became a limit for Joseph, the reason is plain and clear. You are his wife. Period. Not you are ugly. Not you are too mama-ish and I'm young. No. The issue was not that. Maybe she was very beautiful. But it was nothing to do with beauty or age. It was only that uh, you are my limit. I cannot cross that limit. So the person can be beautiful. They can be handsome. They can be nice. But there is a limit. You don't cross. Praise the name of the Lord. And not just in that area. There are other limits as well. Even if your boss can talk to you as a friend there's a limit hallelujah you know sometimes the boss just decides to be very friendly talks to you ask you how was uh, how was the match yesterday eh? now that's the boss but now you don't take that to mean you can address him anyhow you want now it is office work and you say vp boss ile mambo vipi there must be limits. Praise the name of the Lord. You know I can joke with the boss up to a certain extent, but there are limits I don't cross. But Christians, I want to command boss Anil, kneel down, Nikuombe. Pastor Alisema Nyinya Mjuagi. Hell. Know your limits. Know how to deal with people that are up. I have, I've, I've heard of cases where people have been fired from their places of work because of the way that they didn't know their limits. Early end anointing service, miracle service, I'm a now officine on Monday. The boss is the devil now, and, and you want to cast out demons. Boss anakusikiza, anakuangalia, usha speak in tongues. The next day you have your letter, you are fired. Now you go back to the pastor who did the miracle service and he can't help you. Let's stand on our feet this morning. These are the areas you must pass when it comes to faithfulness. Be faithful in the list. Be faithful with the small. Be faithful in your small beginnings. 
Be faithful with the unrighteous mammon. Be faithful with what belongs to another. The Bible says, when you are faithful in what belongs to somebody else, then you can be entrusted with your own. Lift up your hands to God and begin to pray and ask the Lord to help you in these three areas that you will be found faithful with the little faithful in the area of money faithful with what belongs to another person come on pray for yourself right now father in the name of jesus help me oh god lord that i will not fail in this test mighty father lord help me king of glory to be diligent in how i handle uh, uh, the things that are committed to me however small they are oh God help me king of all glory in the mighty name of Jesus Lord I want to remain faithful to be found faithful in the name of Jesus the Bible says in the book of Micah Micah chapter number 7 verse 2 and 3 the Bible says the faithful man has perished from the earth. Say, God forbid. The faithful man has perished from the earth. Say, God forbid. And there is no one upright among men. Say, God forbid. They all lie in wait for blood. Every man hunts his brother with a net. Say, God forbid. That they may successfully do evil with both hands. Say, God forbid. Begin to pray. This issue of faithful men perishing, I mean, are not being there. Say, Lord, may I be found. May I be found. May I be found. When they are searching for faithful civil servants, may I be on the number. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you. I pray, dear Lord, for myself and everyone in this congregation and those who are watching online. Lord, we do not want to fulfill this scripture. Lord, we do not want that people will look around and find no faithful person. Lord, may you help us to be found, O God, in that gap. Lord, at our places of work in our neighborhoods, may we be found faithful. In our families, may we be found faithful in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray that when we are handling uh, little things and, and, and simple beginnings and small beginnings and people in low positions, Lord, may we not disregard. May we handle that with care. Father, help us, Lord, to be found faithful even with money. May we know that we are stewards of what you have given to us. And I pray, mighty God, that you will help us to also be faithful with other people's things, to know our limits in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a good hand this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You are here today or you are watching online and you do not know the Lord in a personal way you want to give your life to Jesus I want you to pray this prayer after me say Lord Jesus I open my heart that you may come in and be the Lord and Savior of my life forgive me all my sins remove my name from the book of death write it in the book of life thank you Jesus for saving me in Jesus name Amen. Father, I want to pray for anyone that has made this prayer, either here or online, that Lord, you will help them to grow, to mature, to be grounded in the things of God. Guide and order their steps to a church where they can be nurtured to grow. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.